Hi, in this video I will talk about the test surah. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Oh, you will believe, you shall not befriend my enemies and your enemies, extending love and friendship to them. Even though they have disbelieved in the truth that has come to you, they persecute the messenger and you just because of you believe in your God, your Lord. If you mobilize the struggle in my cause, seeking my blessings, how can you secretly love them? I am fully aware of everything you conceal and everything you declare. Those among you who do this have indeed strayed off the right path. So, and there is a data, you will see the detail, more information about it. Um, so the whenever they encounter you so you know they, they persecute they say it's a persecute but doesn't explain clearly whenever they encounter you they treat you as enemies and hurt you with their hands and tongues they want you to disbelieve so it is important that Quran says that you should stay away from people who hurt you with their hands and with their tongues and they want them to be split. Your relatives and your money can never help you on the day of resurrection. He will judge among you. God is seer of everything you do. A good example has been set for you by Abraham though, and those with him. They say to their people, We do disown you and the idols that you worship besides God. We denounce you. And you will see nothing from us except animosity and hatred until you believe in God alone. However, a mistake was committed by Abraham when he said to his father, I will pray for your forgiveness, but I possess no power to protect you from Lord. Our Lord, we trust in you and submit to you. To you is the final destiny. So, here the danger is that if Prophet can pray for someone's forgiveness then uh, okay they can, he can but in case that they should they shouldn't be atheists they should be at least believers so if you claim that you can pray for forgiveness it's like you are you are coming in between them so they have no power to do that so if so that's why it can be so but you know he tried to use this logical expression, it's like a court, but I possess no power to protect you from God. So then, then what is the point of praying? It's a useless praying, because God tells that God will send them to the hell. Our Lord, let us not to be oppressed by those who disbelieve and forgive us. You are the Almighty, most wise. And the life provides us such opportunities such things that force you to choose your side if you don't choose your side they force you to choose your side you cannot be easily sedentary and even being sedentary is will be choice because other people will not be sedentary a good example has been set by them for those who seek god in the last day as for those who turn away god is in no need most praiseworthy god may change the animosity between you and them into love god is omnipotent God is forgiver, most merciful. God doesn't enjoin you from befriending those who do not fight you because of religion and do not evict you from your homes. You may befriend them and be equitable towards them. God loves the <coughs> equitable. So God says that you should be fair. You shouldn't be unfair thinking that they do not believe in God. You cannot just uh, un unfairly judge them. God enjoins you only from befriending those who fight you because of religion, evict you from your homes, and band together with others to banish you. You shall not befriend them. Those who befriend them are the transgressors. So, <laughs> uh, only befriending those who fight you. So, they shouldn't fight because of religion. So, it describes what kind of person you can befriend. Uh, so, er, so the, let's assume that there is a, someone defending atheism strongly and God suggests you not to befriend them. Oh, you will believe, and you cannot be that uh, close friend in a way. 
Oh, you will believe, unbelieving woman, ask for asylum with you. You shall test them. God is fully aware of their belief. Once you establish that they are believers, you shall not return them to the disbelievers. They are not lawful to remain married to them, nor shall be dis the disbelievers be allowed to marry them. Give back the dowries that the disbelievers have paid. You commit no error by marrying them, so long as you pay them their due dowries. Do not keep disbelieving wives if they wish to join the enemy. So it means, do not force women to stay with you. In the previous videos, I mentioned that uh, this is very good, interesting, that you, you give the dowries if they want to stay with them, they give money to the man. It's very interesting. In the Islamic communities, I never see them discussing this. Uh, but this is a rare situation anyway. Do not keep disbelieving wives if they wish to join the enemy. So it's like, a, uh, if they don't want to be with you, you cannot force them to be your slave, like someone claimed. Uh, you may ask them the dowry you had paid, and they may ask for what they paid. This is God's rule. He rules among you. God is omniscient, most wise. So there is another thing in another surah. We see that there is a verse. It says that uh, for for people married to the prophet, and it says that if you they want to divorce, they can divorce. The prophet cannot force them to stay in marriage. If any of your wives join the enemy's camp and you are forced to fight, you shall force the enemy to compensate the men to, who lost their wives by giving them what they spend on their wives. You shall reverence God in whom you believe. O oh, your prophet, when, you, when the believing woman to seek asylum with you pledge to you that they will not set up any idols, idols besides God, nor steal nor commit adultery, so they are not cheating you, nor kill their children, nor fabricate any falsehood, nor disobey your righteous orders, you shall accept their pledge and pray to God to forgive them. God is forgiver, most merciful. All you will believe, do not befriend people with whom God is angry and who are hopelessly stuck in display. They are just as hopeless as the disbelievers who are already in the graves. So it is, uh, it is another, there is another harmony I mentioned. In the Quran we see that you shall not befriend my enemy. So when it, it ended up with the same way, you know, with the same method, you shall not befriend my enemies. And at the end, we see that. And it's the main message of this surah. Anyway, thanks for watching this video and hope to see.